you've been paying any attention to the news, you know that the big story broke yesterday about Biden and Ukraine. And that's really only the first part of the story. The second part of the story is how social media worked diligently to suppress that story, to suppress it getting out further into the news and to do what they could to cover for Biden. That's pretty clear. And they gave a bunch of you know crappy explanations of what they were doing. And I thought about that. Maybe I should make a video about this. And uh, there's oh, so many others coming out on it. You know, why, why even bother? But then something happened to me this morning that really got me bugged and got me thinking about this in, in a larger perspective. And that's what I want to bring to this video, this larger perspective. But let me begin first by just pointing out what happened. I used to have a New York Post on my iPhone, but I switched to an Android device in April. And I still haven't downloaded everything I used to have on my iPhone. As I remember things or I need things, I download them, the Android versions. So I didn't have a New York Post on my phone. So I so said, I wonder what the New York Post did today. Because yesterday it was Ukraine. I'm sure there's more coming. They must have some new story up today. So I opened Google on my, my phone and I typed in, uh, I searched for New York Post. You know, hit the button to search. And lo and behold, what came up on the top of my Google search for New York Post? I'm going to put it up here. You can see it. An ad for the New York Times. I searched for New York Post. And if you look at the picture of a screenshot that I took, you can see I, I typed in New York Post. And the number one response I get from Google is the New York Times. And I said, this is unbelievable. What the hell are they doing? Now, the second one down was New York Post. And I went there and then I figured I better, I better just download the app because I, I can't trust Google either. So you've got Google, you've got Facebook, you've got Twitter, you know, the whole, the whole shebang here of social media. And they're all working to suppress the New York Post. You search for New York Post in Google, at least when I did, and I, I got the screenshot. You can try it yourself. It'll take you to an ad for the New York Times. Now, to me, that's not legit. That's really suspicious. I'm sitting there thinking about this this morning, and I'm thinking, like, Man, there's so much crap going on. We've got this story. We've got how social media is responding to it. We've got all these polls that are increasingly looking fake. I mean, especially, I live in Florida, and, and it just looks like it's going to be a, a big blowout here for Trump. But if you look at the polls, Biden's ahead five, seven, eight, nine, ten points. It doesn't make any sense. And these people said the same thing four years ago. I mean, you can get a poll, search for it 2016, and you're going to get the same results. You know, Hillary Clinton ahead by nine points. Now it's Biden ahead by eight, nine, ten points. I said, what, what the hell's going on? And you got the media, you know, suppressing stories, not covering stories, not responding to anything, never asking Biden any really tough questions. Or I should say, very rarely asking Biden any tough questions. And when they do, you know, well, Blitzer asked uh, Nancy Pelosi a tough question. She accuses him of being in bed with the Republicans or working for the Republican Party. I mean, what the hell is wrong with these people? What's going on with the media? What's going on with our politicians? I mean, I'm watching some a little bit of the Amy Comey, Coney Barrett nomination hearings, and it's it's appalling. I mean, you know, I usually get pretty crappy questions from most of these people, whether they're Democrats or Republicans. But some of the ones the Democrats are asking, you know, have you ever sexually harassed anybody? Uh, you know, and Spartacus going off on these rants, you know, and it's just it's just nonsense asking her the same questions over and over again. She's clearly not going to answer. And the reason she's not going to answer, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't answer if I was her either. And it's just it's so much nonsense. And you, and you look at all this stuff in, in the, the democratic cities and the people are, you know, mostly peaceful protests, burning stuff down, eluding over $2 billion of damage so far. You know, what's going on? And, and the problem is we look at these things in isolation. And what we need to start to do, I think, is to look at them collectively. What in the hell is happening? What are we living through right now? What are we living through right now? What are we witnessing? But all this stuff is linked. You know, these people are in control and they don't want to lose control and they will do whatever it takes to hold on to control. That's what's happening in the cities. They will burn down their own cities rather than shut these things down 
call them what they are, unrest, arson, looting. Instead, they call them peaceful protests. And God forbid, ask Donald Trump for help that actually puts an end to it, because that would make him look good. But they won't do that. They'd rather see their cities be destroyed than do that. And, and you have to look, the, the pollsters would rather destroy their own legitimacy, their own reputations, than do anything that might make Donald Trump look good. The media would rather destroy their legitimacy, their, lose their face, rather than help Donald Trump. The same with social media. They'd rather look blatantly oppressive and biased than do anything that might help Donald Trump. These people, these progressive apparatchiks, this progressive nomenclatura that we have, they will rather see this country destroyed than lose control. That was the same thing with the, the French aristocracy. It was the same thing with the Catholic Church. You know, they would rather make a desert of Central Europe in the Thirty Years' War than lose their control, which they ended up losing anyway, and destroy much of Central Europe in the process. So that's the reality we face. And that's why I get so concerned. That's why I post videos about a coming or present civil war. It is a revolutionary situation. And if one group or the other makes a misstep and misplays things, or they both do, or maybe nobody does and things just spin out of control, it's going to be a hell of a mess. And we're not talking about the American Civil War. If we have a civil war, it's going to look more like the, the Spanish Civil War, the Russian Civil War, the Chinese Civil War. It's not going to be anything as civil as the American First Civil War. This one's going to be bad. And that's where we're headed. And that's my big fear. What do you think? Leave a comment. You think what I said was worthwhile? Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share this video, this video, excuse me, with your friends. And in the interim, you know, make sure to vote. Keep fighting. Keep resisting.